Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper, and we are back with the Moxon antenna, the fabulous Moxon antenna. Although the first one I built wasn't that fabulous. If you remember part one, and I put a link down below, I built it out of 10 millimeter copper tubing. It was for the 6 meter band, 51.5 megahertz, so fairly large antenna. And it was kind of wobbly, uh, flimsy, it wasn't really portable, so I decided to build another one. And I had a great idea about this design, so keep watching because it's coming up. Also, if you remember well, I got interested in 2 meter SSB, which is awesome. 2 meter actually usually is used with these radios. I shouldn't hold it like this, of course. <laughs> these radios are FM, frequency modulation. While FM is great for music, it's not very good for long distance radio communications because it's not efficient. This sends a signal that is 12.5 kilohertz wide. And that's a lot of power wasted on the bandwidth. Now, if you use SSB and particularly USB on the 2 meter band, uh, you get a 3 kilohertz signal, so your power is much more concentrated. So that's the reason why I want to build a new 2 meter Moxon antenna, which will be directional, not as directional as a Yagi Uda antenna, which I built on a portable model. You can find the video also. Actually, I'll put it down there too. But I love my Yagi Uda antenna, but it's not that small. So I know that a Moxon antenna will be fairly small and it gives you a 5 decibel gain. Now I already have an antenna for the 2 meter band and that's the PAR-OA144. And that's an excellent antenna. It's an omnidirectional antenna, meaning that it radiates all around. The problem with that is that you don't have any gain. It actually has less gain than a dipole antenna. So not something made for long distance. Excellent for local. That's why I bought it. But long distance, phew, not that great. So the Moxon should fix that problem. This is what's left of my six meter Moxon. There should be four pieces, but I guess I lost one. Here's the uh, description for the 6 meter Moxon antenna I'm going to build in this uh, video. Uh, you can see here the metric version and here is the uh, standard version. And the 2 meter version here uh, in metric and also the same version in standard. Don't you love hardware stores? I need some wood for my 6 meter Moxon. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers, I can actually get some stuff, so thank you guys. I think I'll get this one. It seems a little bit sturdier. I do need some wood screws and I might as well get stainless. I think it's stainless. I think I just have enough money to buy a small can of paint. Yeah, that should do. I'm going to spare you the whole build, but I'm going to show you some key points of it, especially the uh, feeding points of the antennas. Here's how the uh, 2 meter Moxon will be assembled. You can see here the copper tubing goes through the wooden cross member. I'll have to make a 10 millimeter hole. And at the center, at the bottom, you can see the BNC adapter, which is where the antenna is going to be fed. This is a model of the 6 meter Moxon. And of course, it's going to be much bigger than that. But I wanted to show you how it hangs and where the feed point is right there. Now, the only concern I have is that it might do this business in the wind. That probably wouldn't be good, but I'll just have to test it and see how it goes. And here's the six meter Moxon finished. Ignore the masking tape that just uh, to keep it on the floor. So this on the right side is the top of the antenna and on the other side we have the bottom and one spacer in the middle. The feed point is just a BNC adapter and on top and bottom of the antenna we have the uh, separation here. So those two wires of course are insulated, they're not connected. When not in use the antenna is just rolled up into a bundle less than three feet long. Here is half of the antenna 
with the cross member and the tubing uh, which I pounded into the holes that I made right here. The uh, feed point on the 2 meter Moxon is also a BNC adapter and I'm bolting it here to this piece of wood that's going to be epoxied to the cross member. So here's the end result and how it goes on to the mast. Of course I painted it green and black so <laughs> you can't see it much against the uh, green background. The connector here is placed on top, that's the feed point, but of course it will be on the bottom. Now this part here is the reflector and this is the uh, driven element, so radiation goes this way. VHF is not a time when you want to mess around with cheap lossy cables, so I'm using LMR 400. The cable is secured to the antenna and the mast to provide some stress relief. I'll probably have to uh, make a bigger hole in the center of that cross member to get the antenna lower onto the mast so it won't be very high for today's test but it should be alright. As you can see here I am operating backyard portable and I brought out my ICOM IC251E 2 meter all mode transceiver. SWR is actually 1.2 to 1, a whoopie doo. CQ, 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 CQ. Ici F4, W, B, Y, Foxtrot 4, Whiskey, Bravo, Yankee, over. It's actually pretty easy to turn the antenna and make it switch direction just by uh, turning the mast. I am getting a regional beacon. So I know it's receiving well, but maybe propagation isn't that great. Let's check the uh, directionality. Oh yeah. Of course today is the day when there is absolutely zero propagation on 2 meters. <laughs> and you know, nothing I can do about that. But the antenna works really well. It seems to have a very good uh, front to back ratio. Uh, pretty directive. Not as directive as a Yagi Uda. But that's a good thing because it's not too narrow and you can actually uh, hear signals I mean uh, not today but <laughs> it will probably be easier to actually hear signals that you know you don't have to be exactly within a few degrees to uh, to get five decibels should be approximately three times uh, the power so of course the antenna doesn't amplify anything but it focuses the beam and that gives you the gain I will use this antenna again, of course, uh, that's why I built it. Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty good and I think once I uh, drill a bigger hole in the mast, it will be uh, much better because I can slide it a little bit lower on the mast uh, where it's thicker and it won't be uh, wobble, you know, it won't wobble so much. So we'll try the uh, 6 meter Moxon and here it is. I removed two elements from my mast so now it's uh, 9 meters tall. And I, of course, will attach the cable right here. Here's a better view of the connection. And the cable runs onto the uh, spacer and down the mast. Well, I did get it a little bit higher than the uh, 2 meter antenna. And it is pointing in the right direction, so towards England. This time I'm using my uh, PRC352 which is made up of a PRC, well an RT351, uh, that's the uh, tuner, the surf unit, a 20 watt amplifier and of course the battery. So this is 6 meter FM. F4 uh, WBY test. I've never made an unsolicited contact with this radio. <laughs> There's just nobody on 6 meter FM but eh, I'm gonna try anyway. CQ, 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 CQ. Ici F4 uh, Whiskey Bravo Yankee Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee Over 
Well, I can't say I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting really a contact on six meter, but I had hopes for two meters and the propagation is just not there. So, but I'm pretty happy about the antennas. They work really well and you will see them again. Have a good one.